Yo soy Diego Ávila y usted está escuchando al Cartridge Club. Weekly! Weekly! <laughs> oh, we're getting weekly this week. We are. Oh, I don't man. know what that means. Me neither, but I got a whole lot of news. Awesome. Uh, first thing I want to mention, I did not look into very much, but it looks like Blizzard is publishing Destiny 2 for PC. Correct. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what, who better to uh, handle that network? You know Nobody. I mean? um, now, is Destiny... An Bung Act Bungie belongs to Activision. Okay, games. I was going to say. So it's an Activision game. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's cool. That's a good partnership. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, yeah, that's all I have for that. Let's go quick. We're going to go quick. All right, next up, Red Dead Redemption 2 delayed to spring of 2018. Yes. Reason given. Uh, there was a reason given? Yeah. Oh. We want to make sure the game doesn't suck and that there's no bugs. Good reasons. So. Good reasons. Thank you, Julian, for pointing that out to me. Yeah. Because that's who showed me. Um, might have seen it eventually, but he showed me first. So thank you, yeah. Julian. Uh, Resident Evil movies getting a reboot. Ooh. After seven of them, I guess it's time. I wonder if it's going to be... <clears throat> Good. Like, I'm, sorry, uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I like this, the first six. Well, we all make mistakes, you know. Um, I'm wondering if this will be more like the games. Uh, probably not. Mm, hopefully like the first one and the second one. Maybe. But yeah. Next for me, Xbox Game Pass is available right now for gold subscribers for a 14-day trial period. Oh, cool. Did you try That's, that? No. Oh. That's their Netflix gaming service. I, I know. I can't. There's not a game that I would be able to beat in the 14... I'm still supposed to be editing Sega videos. Yeah, but they want you to try it out. That's why. Like, yeah, I'm not going to. To get your hope. It's not something I'm going to buy, so I'm not going to try it out. Yeah, fair. But enough. that's a big deal for people who do want to get it. That is a huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. Um, you could, could you get per Perfect Dark on there? Perfect Dark HD? I don't know. I already have it. Yeah, but I wonder if, like, for the people listening. Oh, I don't know if it's one of the 100 games or not. But check it out. Oh, it has to be one of the backwards compatible? Correct. I'm confused. And there's only a hundred being on the service right now. They're gonna oh, right, 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 right. I forgot. Yeah. It probably is on there. Anyway. Um, the leaked Rabbids Mario RPG pictures. It wasn't the pictures that leaked. It was a PowerPoint presentation that leaked. Fair enough. That included phrases such as, on this date, convince the gamers and reviewers. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> um, it also said badass Badass princess. princess. Oh, anyway, what did you think of the, the look of it? Uh, this game is not for me. Yeah, this game looks exactly like what I thought it would look like. Yeah, I, I I'm hoping think, it's I a troll. The uproar. Like, what were people thinking? What, what were they going to expect from a Rabbids or Mario game? He's gonna yeah, suck. as soon as they said Rabbids Mario RPG crossover, it's not for us. I turned off. It's not for us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Easy Allies made a joke saying, you know, what if it's a whole big troll and that they're going to come out to announce it and the Rabbids have st like the Rabbids have stolen the actual presentation and made it look like this, but it turns out it's not that at all. I wonder, but but we had heard rumors before that. Mario is going to have guns, and they have guns, yeah. so it looks pretty legit. It's not for me. Uh, I hope it does well. I hope it does well, too. It is not for me. I say that before I even see it. I just don't like rabbits. I don't think I need to see it. I don't like rabbit. It's There's eight playable characters. Mario, Luigi, Peach, and uh, Toad, and then four rabbits dressed like Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. Mm. I heard it's like a strategy RPG, too. Yeah. Anyway... Uh, We'll see. We'll see. No, this is confirmed. These are all leaks. We don't know for sure. That's a that's a that's a confirmed leak. It's not for me. All right, moving on. It's probably not. If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably not for you. Maybe for your kids. Yeah, you know what? That could be for your kids. Yep. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, Julian, pick that up. My next is a new Dragon Age is coming. Confirmed. Oh. Bioware Edmonton oh, yes. is working on the next Dragon Age game. Here's hoping that it is more like Dragon Age Two and less like Dragon Age Hinterlands. What's Hinterlands? I'm confused. Uh, Inquisition, the first... What's Hinterlands a reference The first to, zone is... I'm pretty sure it's called the Hinterlands, the first zone. Oh! And I put, like, 180 hours into that zone. <laughs> Bullshit. That's horrible. <laughs> I just swore, by the way. My <laughs> fingertips are all cut. I was well, replacing how the... How far into me? Apparently I say BS a Did lot. Did you just swear? Yeah. I, I might have tried to cut myself off at the end, but it was... Seriously? Still, we're, still enough. We're four and a half minutes in. I say BS a lot. Uh, I, mean, I guess that means I can drop some SFs in this one. Do not drop SFs. I'm just saying. <laughs> just edit that out. Um, yeah, it was Pam that uh, that I learned this from because she said, please don't make it open world. And I tend to agree with Pam. Yeah. Um, 
Castlevania trailer. Did you see it? Oh, did I see it? Looks cool. I right? saw it seven times. That's a lot of times to see. I watched it in slow motion. Did you? What are you talking about? <laughs> it looks really good. It does look good. I was surprised at how good it looked. Um, July seventh release date. That's not far. Can't from. wait. That's not far from now. How do you feel about the fact that it's in English and not in some weird other language you can read subtitles for? Well, it's, it's English made, isn't it? Yeah. Well, but I know that's how you why it's in English. Subtitles. I don't like Japanese voices over English. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> anyway. Um, next up for me, 8-Bit Doe controllers get firmware update that allows them to play on Nintendo Switch. 8-Bit what? Doe? What the heck are you saying? 8-Bit Doe? I don't know what you're saying. It's a little <laughs> USB controller you can use for a P. Oh, is that from Retro or something? Sure. It's from, I think it's from 8-Bit Doe. I think it's the name of the company. Oh, 8-Bit Doe. Um, <laughs> I do not know Previously, this, these controllers were compatible with... Uh, PC, Mac, and Linux. Um, they now are compatible with Nintendo Switch as well. So you could feed... Wow. Now, they don't have as many buttons as a Switch controller, so you wouldn't be able to play all Switch games. Right. But you can play some Switch games. More importantly, you would be able to play uh, virtual console games. Specifically, these come into the shapes of Super Nintendo and NES controllers. Okay. So you could play Is those this what games. you have? Is this the no. thing? No. Oh, okay. It looks like that, but it's, it's wireless. Okay. It's Bluetooth. Oh. Um, good? I reached out to the 8 Doe today. What? 8 Bit Doe? To verify, <laughs> to verify whether or not they were also compatible on PS4 and Xbox One. They're not, which tells me that Nintendo's probably going to patch this out in about eight minutes. How do you, why? What do you mean? So they're Bluetooth controllers that now have the ability to access a Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. If in any way that provides the ability to hack a Switch. Also, it's now a third-party controller that you can use on the Switch. But I understand how that relates to PS4 and Xbox One. The same controllers are not compatible with PS4 and Xbox One. So, But they're NES controllers. How would you use they're them? They're not NES controllers. Oh. They're shaped like NES controllers. Oh. They're USB, they're, they're Bluetooth controllers mm. meant for emulation stations, essentially, on gotcha. your PC. Gotcha. Or for playing, uh, I'm sure the official thing is for playing retro-style games on Steam or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But they're meant for emulators. Uh, emulators. I, I got you. So, there, I predict that there is 0% chance that Nintendo allows these to stay connected to their consoles. I'm very curious to know. 0% chance. That's what I'm saying. That's a very low percent. Very low. Very All right. Well, I'll kill off the yeah. file. If that. Sony and Microsoft, if they were compatible with those, with an issue, I would say maybe they let it, maybe they let it stand. Nah. Because they're not. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if they can do anything about this. All you do is do firmware update to Switch. And what would it do? Just remove the ability for these to communicate. What would it, it, it do? Huh. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. <laughs> anyway, it is cool today. Tomorrow it's going to be bad press when everybody says, why did you do this, Nintendo? Yeah. And the answer is... Where are you getting this news? Well, I, I didn't have that one printed. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I have one more thing. Yeah, um, did you... Yes, you did. You watched Fistful of Dollars at King of Kong. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're making it into a stage musical. Oh. Yeah, so you can go see it. Is, is the Billy Mitchell going to be in it? One can hope, but mm. likely not. Although, if, it'd be cool if Billy Mitchell played uh, Steve Weeby. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> all right, that's all I get for news. All right, me too. Cool. Woo! That was a quick news week. That was quick. Now like you're all we, caught up. I like how I went through them and didn't waste a bunch of time talking about stuff that didn't matter. I agree, and we're getting into update, which is brought to you this week by Amp, the best energy drink you can buy from your local dollar store. Yeah. Which has changed, by the way. They changed the way the caches are now. So be excited for that next time you go in. So if this is your first time listening to CC Weekly, uh, it is a, uh, a, a podcast that covers some, some news. We usually cover a topic of discussion, and this segment is going to be us talking about uh, what things have happened in the Cartridge Club community. Maintain uh, mostly, we're focusing on the content creators and what content they have created over the last week. I like when you, you slip things in that I don't know what's coming. <laughs> I didn't know any of that was coming. Uh, That's good. Uh, you just gave that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I, I don't know if it's going to be SDC or Derek who grabs that. That oh, sound all right. right. That's okay. Um, so we're going to start with two announcements. Three announcements. First off... I have a few, too. Um, just so we're saying. <laughs> so first off, we're going to say CC Portable. That's the uh, portable game of the month. Is Donkey Kong and the Game Boy. That runs until the end of June. Yeah. Get in there. Play that. There's currently a challenge. Oh, Matt Bandy has already beat this game to completion. Yeah, I think Vintage did, too. He... No, Vintage is... Oh, yes, yes. Congratulations. Um... <laughs> Matt has thrown down the gauntlet to say that he will be able to beat it a second time before anybody else managed to get through it once. Yes, I think Benny's is the only one who... No, somebody else has completed it. 
That's all. Uh, I can't remember. Um, so get on there, Donkey Kong. Let us know on the forums what you think about that. Don't forget to get your two-word review out with the hashtag CC. I love that it's two-word review. Yeah, I love everything about it. Curse is pretty fantastic. Yeah, we should probably show it out. You know, the game of the month. We never, yeah, we'll do all that. We never talk about that. Uh, next up, CC Prime, which is the game of the month, is Perfect Dark. Oh, I see. We are recording that show. If you're listening to this, we recorded it yesterday. And um, uh, we should probably slow up a bit. What's CC Prime? Uh, that's the first time I've heard that. That's not more like the, the main show. <laughs> okay. Called Prime. So when you hashtag CC Prime, that's for the game of the month? Uh, sure, if I do that, yeah. Is that the new hashtag? No, it's probably going to be ha- CC GOTM. I like GOTM more. Yeah. Yeah, okay. for, the, for the game of the month. But anyway. What this is the prime one? So uh, Perfect Dark was May. That is all wrapped up. Now you're listening to this probably at the very end of May. The podcast will be out this Wednesday. I'm excited. Uh, more importantly, we are going to be playing for June Final Fantasy 4. Unless you're playing it on Super Nintendo, then it's Final Fantasy 2. Mm. And this is the game that started the Cartridge Club. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, those are my... Oh, and last announcement. It's too late. Never mind. I have another announcement. Um, the Cartridge Club has its own official Twitter now. Cartridge Club NA. So, you know, if you want to give them a follow, or give that a follow, it's going to give a lot of uh, news from the club will come through that Twitter. Yeah, there'll be less uh, ranting tweets that you see from personal accounts. What? And and, uh, and more club-focused tweets. Yeah, yeah. So definitely give uh, Cartridge Club NA a follow. Um, You can also follow that on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Uh, same thing, Cartridge Club NA. Yeah. And it's on Facebook, Cartridge Club NA. It is? Yes. Very good. Um, also, one quick thing before we get into more updates is the CCABC. Um, if you're doing the Alphabet Challenge this year with the CC, um, Donnie was just looking for some input, just for some feedback. So if you go over the forums where you've been going, um, there's some questions there that he would like you to answer. Just things like what game you've enjoyed the most, what you spend the most time with, that kind of thing. So, you know, cheers to Donnie, because this thing's going strong, so I'm really so, impressed. what if this is my first time listening to the podcast? What's the CCABC? Oh, right. So, if you go to cartridgeclub.org, into our forums, you can find uh, in the Just for Sun, Fun section, CCABC is an alphabet challenge. So, throughout the year, you have to... Oh, so it's the Cartridge Club Alphabet Backlog Challenge. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. So, throughout the year, you complete a game... That's ABC. <laughs> alphabet Backlog Challenge. Good God, that's awesome! I didn't know that! What? Is that on purpose? Yes! Donnie, good on you. <laughs> Alphabet Backlog Challenge, ABC. Oh, my goodness. All right. This is happening. This is live so, in the air, folks. We'll complete a game uh, starting with the letter, each letter in the alphabet. My phone work. Uh, CrushClub.org. <laughs> we got to rewind this. All right. Better for updates, or for news, I should say. Uh, is that still announcements? News? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. I think that's all I have for that. All right, so next up, we're going to talk about uh, some... Cartridge Club Podcasts. These are yes. podcasts that came out this week, and I want to start with Bonus Barrel. Okay, I'm down for starting with Bonus Barrel, always. Uh, Bonus Barrel talked about uh, some games this week, uh, the Sword Quest or something. Missing a big thing here that happened. The better, the best part of Bonus <laughs> Barrel. Okay. <laughs> uh, number one, Left made his return. That is the biggest thing! Left's Tri- back! Triumphant return. My heart warmed in the intro. Coming up a Bonus Barrel, and it's Left. And yeah. I'm like, oh. Instant hard news. I was sort of hoping that Rob was trolling you and that he just cut in some old left talk. I would have been very <laughs> upset. Uh, but they, uh, they talked about save states. And whether or not did. you do multiple... Yeah, it was in the early start, in the early part. Whether you do... Oh, multiple, no, they're talking about with loss these, of save files. Is that what you mean? Yeah, they were saying how Rob and Howie does multiple saves. Saves, of, yes. Of, and I wanted to know if you do. No, I, don't, I should. You roll all, you like to... I'm all in. in. Right to the edge, eh? Yeah, right to the edge. I also don't, and we'll talk about it later in TC Answers. Yes, there's a question. Why I wish I did. Yes. Um, on top of that, Seiji also started a new segment called CC Counter, where they took uh, one of the things that we said on this show and uh, gave an alternate point of view on it. Uh, I love it. Uh, you know, a, a different perspective. Fantastic. What was it? When did they cover so this? We were talking about uh, how I made the statement of it doesn't, you don't need to understand, you don't need to know the history of games to enjoy games. Right. Um, which I do still stand by. However, Seiji's... I don't even remember you saying that. <laughs> Seiji's point of you don't uh, need to know the history of the games, but it can enrich your experience. That's it can, a left sentence. It can enrich your... My dogs are barking. It can enrich your... Uh, Appreciation, understanding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I see how far we've come. This is fantastic. You can edit all that out? Nope. <laughs> Seeing how far, they, how far we've come. Um, you have to hear the professional talk about what we are and what updates about to be. Yep. 
<laughs> um, Leaving it in. Thanks, yeah. Alex. That was my dog, Shadow. Anyway, yeah. I love it. Great segment. Great episode. Yes. Um, and uh, Shelby edited it. She put in some music in there. Shelby's awesome. Uh, and the does. music was just fantastic. Yes. I did not guess that in the... Uh, I nailed it. Well done. Um, uh, but no, great episode. Great segment. Um, Seiji, Rob, guys, please continue. Oh, Left at the End made a prediction yeah. that uh, I was actually reverse psychology trolling them to get them to talk about us more by not talking about them. That's so I am actually going to edit out all of this stuff with Bonus Barrel. No. We're not going to talk about them at all. We are always talking about <laughs> Bonus Barrel. Such a good show. It is. Um, Left did mention uh, Dark Souls 3 file that he lost. Um, that was pretty sad. It was uh, the classic, somebody bumped into the power cord. Ooh. Lost, I think he said 45 hours. Right? That would be followed up by the classic, I'm loading my shotgun. Dude, he was going through the fog to the last... Fight. No. My heart. Oh, I felt so bad when I heard that. Also, Rob brought up um, why he stopped collecting all the Vita games, because there were a lot of pervy ones. Yeah. And I always think that's funny, because there and are... that's why he stopped? Yeah. There are, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was why he started. There are a lot of pervy games on the Vita. Cool. Um, so, if you like pervy games on the Vita, let me know. I'm just curious who likes them. Yeah, that's all I got for BB, I guess. Uh, next Shelly did a great job editing. She did. In fact, if she wants to edit this show, she's welcome to. Yeah, or any show in the future. Uh, next up, we got STC. Yeah, all right, cool. I got some interesting... STC has some interesting topics. I mean, they talked a lot about TV shows getting canceled and what's that, and that's cool. I like that they do that every year. It's funny, because last year I was mowing my lawn when I listened to it, and this year I was mowing my lawn when I listened to it. Hmm. Um, but uh, he brought up some interesting things about his daughter and, and a bully. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I found it very fascinating. It's, it's like stuff I would have heard on TV. Wow. And uh, this is a real life thing now that kids are dealing with the social media stuff. Like, it's dangerous. Yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of scary. Um, also, he told a story about how he taught himself to hit a ball again. Yeah. Baseball. And I thought that was pretty cool, the, too. This was one of my favorite STC episodes. Not because of it, you know, some of their shows are really funny and over the top. This yeah. one, I enjoyed it because of the parenting talk. Because of yeah. the down-to-earth uh, feel real. that it had. Felt gritty. So well done. Uh, mm -hmm. Those guys... Just continue to impress me. It just shows, goes to show you that they have the ability to put on a good show when they're being funny and entertaining, and they also have the ability to dial it in on a serious topic and, and discuss that, right. like a couple of adults. And I do remember laughing at things in, this, in the episode, don't get me wrong. So, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not all. But, uh, man, there are a lot of bad shows that are not canceled. Like, it's blowing yeah. my mind. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got next? Who's watching these things? <laughs> anyway, STC, check them out. They're awesome as always. Who's next for us for podcasts? I have Dollar Dorks, but we brought them up last week, but I didn't had to listen to them then. I no. have now. Throw it out now. Uh, it had Eric and James uh, Retro Pixel on it. All right. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I remember all of it. It was good. Eric told us, Eric talked about that epic pickup that he got from uh, Salvation Army. Um. Yeah. And uh, James was talking about those dirty ass <laughs> thrift stores that he goes to. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. They are some of the dirtiest places. But Dollar Dorks, am I allowed to announce that I'm going to be on Dollar Dor Dorks? That's the thing you'd have to ask Derek. You might have to edit this out then. You are going to have to let me know before you there, get home. There may be an episode <laughs> in the future of Dollar Dorks that I may or may not be on. Which I'm excited to may, I may or may not be. And the thought of being on makes me excited. Um, anyway, great podcast as always. Derek is, is actually turning out to be quite the natural for podcasting. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Um, Polykill, talking about E3. Oh my gosh, I have not heard this yet. This oh, just really? came out, what, yesterday? Monday. I have not heard it yet. It's like four days ago. It's not, it did not come out Monday. Yeah. Well, I know. Your shows come out Monday. Well, I miss it. I, I assume you've deleted them from your podcast. <laughs> I don't see them on there. Never happened. I see Frame Trap. Oh, here it is right here. Getting hyped <laughs> three days ago. <laughs> yeah. Did you say I see Frame Trap? <laughs> I didn't listen to Frame Trap. Uh, yeah, so, well, Paul Kale, Taiwan E3. I kind of don't want you to spoil it, but I guess you have to. No, no, we can wait. We they're they're going to have a new show next week, aren't they, though? Probably. So we have to talk about it now. Yeah, they're talking about E3. Predictions. Wild predictions that they don't think are going to happen. Actual predictions they think might happen. All right, give me one. Do you remember any? I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, I do remember that Jake picked up, he finally bought a game after six months of no new products. Oh my god, what was it? You're going to have to listen to find out. Oh, I can't it. wait. So next week, I'm going to be talking about two episodes of Paul Kale. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, next we have... I don't think I've heard anything. I had a pretty busy week. that's it. Um, I have, like, videos and stuff, but... No, that's it. For a podcast. So, yeah, now yeah. we're going to move on to videos. Okay. Uh, let's start with the Q-Dogs. Yeah, I didn't see it. They had a massive ton of family in. 
Oh, really? Oh, you already said bullshit, didn't you? They had a metric fuck ton of family members in Wow, you don't have to do it. Just because you can. Uh, uh, it, was, it was the youngest christening, bunch of family gatherings. We uh, went a whole weekend with no Eric in Overwatch. Wow. His absence was felt. You must have had a lot of losses. But now that I'm worried when he comes back that it'll be weird. Why would it be weird? <laughs> <laughs> so check that episode. Never weird with Eric. Unless you get those pictures from Derek. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Musty's second breakfast episode is on a, it's on E3 predictions. Ooh. I was going to watch it today, but I was uh, repairing the broken screen of a co-worker's Galaxy S5. You could do that. Um, yeah, and that's why my fingers are all cut. Oh. Dude, um, on Twitter, your whole hand's cut. Oh, that's... Uh, I did the laundry wrong, and Colleen held my hand on the burner on the stove. Well, did you learn your lesson? I did. Now I know how to do the laundry properly. Good. Yes. Good for you. Um, Watch that if anybody wants to see. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so Musty tweeted this out, this episode. Did you see the likes he got on Twitter? It was at like 56. What's going time. on? People like Musty, people like E3. I click on it. You can click on who did likes. There are some weird things on there. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You should check it out. I think he's like a part of some sort of... Uh, Extreme extremist movement. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, uh, but we got to figure out how he tapped into that because that's amazing. Yeah. Extre- well, we just have to be extreme, I guess. Yeah, extreme. <laughs> to the extreme, yes. Uh, STC Pod pickup video. Oh, oh my, gosh. my goodness. Did you see this pickup video? No. Uh, they must have spent $500. What? It was ridiculous. Oh, this is the one that Joe said. He they had Wii's, they had Wii U's, they had games, Where, they had How much was the Wii U? Box Where did you get the Wii U from? Allies. Access and Allies. I love Access and Allies. Like, Bill got the Wii U for 60 bucks. Another one? I think he opt, the guy wanted 80, Bill talked him down to 60. How do you talk down? Bill was like, $80 Wii U. Bill was like, ah, I mean, it's all, look at the screen's all roast here. It's all, <laughs> it's all beat to hell. Oh, I'll, I'll give you 60. Things. And the guy was like, uh, Bill was like, I'll give you six. <laughs> You're taking I'm six. walking away. I'm walking away. <laughs> Holding the money in his face. I'm walking away. And he got it. Wow. Dude, you gotta watch this bigger video. Uh, watch the whole thing. Don't just watch God, the first five minutes that you normally do. Any more time. Like, why can't we extend the hours in the day? Uh, the best solution to that would be to not have children. I, I may or may not be on another podcast tonight. I'm gonna get like two hours of sleep. Well, the solution here is sell your baby. <laughs> Do you know how much you can get for a healthy baby? Especially a cute one like this. Yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, it's all gone. And then you could always track her down when she's 18 and make amends. That is horrible. I will not be doing that. <laughs> but I do want to watch this. family pickup. like Diego. They're a good family. Yeah, Diego would be a good good father to my if baby. If somebody was going to raise him, I would want Diego or Bill. Yeah, I would love Bill. Or Joe. I would, She'd live in the lap of luxury. They could they could split custody. That would be all right with The me. three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, next up, we have Flock of Nerds. Did uh, Mario Mondays? Should have been Wario Wednesdays. Wasn't it a Wario game? Yeah, it was a yeah. uh, game of Wario. Yeah. Uh, it was like Pictionary where they were drawing stuff and guessing them. Yeah. Those guys, so Miles and Catherine, that's what makes great <laughs> on their podcast. Their podcast is once a month, which is really hard to wait for. I know. But every week, you get a little bite sized Miles and Catherine through the week. It's like when you're really craving a Boston Cream Donut. But they're all out on Monday. Nobody but they have cream. But they have Timbits. So you go get a box of 40 Timbits and watch all their videos. But they don't have box of <laughs> Timbits. That does not make sense. That is not a good analogy. Don't do that. Watch them. I uh, mean, yeah, I always, always check out Block of Nerds. Yeah, what else you got? Man, uh, there's a lot that's of videos. all I had for videos. I have one from Jared. Jared, of course, but one of, he did actually a collaboration oh, with Yoshi. Yeah, for Jared. yeah, so Jared and Yoshi did a collab, yes. which is cool. I love seeing two, two engineers in the club collabing together. Yep. Um, Yoshi putting on his acting skills. Are they building off amps? A what? Never mind. Yoshi's going to laugh when he hears that. Oh. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Jared probably will do that. Um, yeah, anyway, he was doing a RGB SNES mod for oh, cool. Super Nintendo. I did see that. And, uh, yeah, man, it looks good. Yeah. Like, the the RGB looks delicious. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was I like my up, video. I was looking at more, like, comparisons. Yep. It's night and day. Like, it's good. Anyway, yeah. So uh, check out Jared. He's got more. He's probably doing one over right now. So those are videos from the club. And lastly, uh, blogs from the club. Yeah. Uh, and I actually have one. I don't have any listed, but I do know that Lo from And Then She Games uh, did put up a Phoenix Wright blog today. Yes. I think she put up another one too, didn't she? Mm-hmm. Either way, that one's definitely up. Yeah. And uh, oh, maybe I'll Shelby, gave, Shelby, Shelby gave it a too. solid 7 out of 10. Shelby gave the, the blog the seven <laughs> Yeah, I knew Shelby. Um, I was just looking up the... Uh, just kidding. Here. Please. Please don't. It, Shelby didn't say that. That's a joke. Everybody's always putting words in Shelby's mouth. 
Um, oh, Retro Revolution. Uh, Jared was asking if, because this is a hashtag CC update, if people would like, to, if viewers would like to see console repair and maintenance videos as well. Give it to me all. Yeah, so yeah, we'll take it all, especially maintenance. I think people need that. Yeah. That's educational. That's going to only go to and views for sure. You show me how to clean these things? Yeah. Uh, that's it for club update. Yeah. So we're going to move on now. So we're putting to bed the CC spotlight. Um, we are? We're going to do. Why am I not informed of this stuff? <laughs> so the CC spotlight is going to be no more. Today will be the last official spotlight. What? I don't even know who it is. And it's also, did you read the document? No, I never read this. We story. have a shared file. We have a shared file that we both have access to that I update every week. And you never is, read is it. Is this the spotlight? Yes. Oh, okay. Then I agree. So. <laughs> I concur. We're, uh, we're getting our spotlight. And instead, we're going to be starting a new, I don't want to say segment, but it's a segment. Uh, a segment. So instead of spotlighting an individual know. in the club, we're going to be uh, giving every week a Cartridge Club mission. What? So this is your mission, should you choose to accept it. Boy, I wish I read this. So first off, I'm going to do the last spotlight and then roll it into the first mission. It's a big spotlight. The spotlight has been long overdue. Can you? We were holding on to it for like... Anyway, carry on. I, I thought we had spotlight this person. I told you we did. We were waiting for a certain something that was coming, which we don't need to say here on there. Oh, right. Because we were going to wait and, and double that up, right? Right. But this guy deserves a spotlight every week. <laughs> I do remember now. Now I know I'm not just a shitty friend. No. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> not not just, not also just a right. Anyway, right. Uh, we're spotlighting. Uh, just a lot of times you hear us use the term, you know, founding members of the Cartridge Club. And we founded the, the Cartridge Club podcast. In theory. Um, <laughs> but the club itself as a community uh, was really... This member here was probably the, the, the biggest reason, reason that it exists. He's the only reason that it is what it is. He's the right reason now. it started. He's probably the reason it exists. He would have died off a lot. He's now. the reason it's as good as it is. Yeah. Uh, most of you have met him. I think we're the only in two, person. We're the only two people in the club who haven't actually met him. Yeah. Uh, after four and a half years, it hurts. <laughs> um, it's Dean Lasagna. Dean, round two gaming lasagna. Yeah. So we first encountered Dean on our YouTube channel. We were give, doing a giveaway. We had hit 100 subscribers. Is that we're, where we met him? Yeah, we were giving away an NES <laughs> and a couple of other things. I can't remember what they were. Games, I think. Uh, and so you had to send your name in for uh, to get for the draw. You had to leave a comment. Dean left his name, and I tried to pronounce his name in the video. Yeah, yes. And I couldn't pronounce it. His la his actual last That's name. Right. And he responded with, "You did close. Good get. Good attempt. But it's like it's pronounced like this, similar to the way lasagna is pronounced, based on how it spells. Right. It's spelled." From that point forward, he has been Dean Lazan. <laughs> he never went um, back. He built the website on his own from scratch. Yeah. He personally uploaded all the backlog videos and podcasts He's so awesome. and blogs of all contributors to the site. So he builds your channel or he builds your page on the site and then he goes and uploads your entire backlog of videos. Yeah. Uh, if you forget to upload your videos, he has been known to upload those as well. Yeah, for you, yeah. You know? Um, so good. <laughs> He, oh, I can't say enough. He's fantastic. Things. He is... He was on our very... He built the no, forms. he was on our second episode. Oh, the second episode. Yeah. He built the forms. He He's easily one of my best friends. Like, even... And I'm not, not just like a best online friend. Right. He's one of my best friends. I have two yeah. friends that I've known since I was 10 years old. Yeah, uh, you do. And then Mark and then Dean. Like, those... Those five guys are the, the five people closest to me yeah. uh, on the planet. Isn't I that have, four? Anyway. Four. Those four guys. <laughs> that's, um, even, that's even better. <laughs> so, and they're in no particular order. Mark's first. But they're in no particular Thanks. order after Mark. Um, um, yeah. Dean stole my heart right from the get-go. Yeah. I remember we're talking about there's a guy at work who's probably top five would, would Jay would be in there because I can interchange Jay. I like that Jay's in there with you. I need to meet Jay. I don't think... I've never met Jay. Close. Jay did... Uh, he did a whole... And, Bogart and Dean, Dean Spotlight. Dean is deserving of every spotlight. If you're a member of the club, you know Dean. If this is your first time you don't know Dean, follow him on Twitter at Round 2 We knew Dean before he had... Before he was Round 2 Gaming. He was Sephiroth 2 4 Yeah! That's right! Um, I forgot about that. The man is... I think he has the... He is the second largest gaming collection on the planet. Uh, third largest. In, in the planet, first largest in Canada. Right. Um, don't quote us on those. Uh, Made up. Those might not be actual facts. He does have a lot. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got a Facebook page. And he's just a genuinely he's nice. Kind. He's fantastic. He's very genuine. So, 
That's He's smart. That's the final spotlight for the Cartridge Club. We, the Cartridge Club Weekly, will never have another spotlight because we could never possibly find anybody more deserving than Dean Lasagna. He likes trolls, troll dolls. He does. So now we're going to do the new segment. The new segment is CC Mission. So this week, the CC Mission, should you choose to accept it, I choose, is to go on Twitter to and send out a tweet to Dean Lasagna at Round Two Gaming, and all you have to say is hashtag Thanks Dean. Yeah, and you can leave a little note. You know, you can. Yeah. Thank that's you. the mission this week. So this week, you at some point on Twitter, at Round2Gaming, hashtag thanks, Dean. Man, he, he is if we could get that trending. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? That would be incredible. Hmm. Next week, we'll All have we a, new, have a new, CC, new CC mission, but that's going to be the, the part that take, that's going to take over spot like this from now on. Uh, I'll be sending that tweet out myself as soon as we finish recording. So I'll, I'm certain that when you ask me what that means... Um, Dude, if you don't get a response, you'll find out when you hear the show. I get a little emotional actually thinking about how long we've been with Dean. <laughs> it's been four years. Yeah. It's actually been more than four years. And think of what the club was and what it is now. Yeah. And it's because of Dean. That's Dean. That's Dean. That's he, he's incredible. Yeah. Anyway. If it wasn't for Dean Lasagna, there would be no Cartridge Club. No. If wouldn't. anything ever happens to Dean Lasagna, <laughs> my nephew. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Please never leave us. It was, you know, Miles and Catherine once made a joke that, uh, the Cartridge Club was lorded over by its uh, fascist brothers. <laughs> two, fa- two fascist brothers, I think it was what they call us, or uh, something like dictator. That. Yeah, you know, I remember. Dictator, yeah. anyway, what they call us. Well, Dean, Dean is the reason that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, Dean. <laughs> yeah. Man, man. He's fantastic. He is. So, hashtag thanks, Dean. Hashtag, yeah, CC Mission this week, hashtag thanks, Dean. And really, thanks. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah seriously. That's it. We're going to move into our topic. That was a great last spotlight. Yeah. I could spotlight him all day, any day. I had forgotten. I thought we had spotlighted him. He mentioned that we hadn't, just as a joke. Yeah. And then I was I like, told you this like every day. And, and I was like, oh my God, that we did. Yeah. But I do remember us waiting now for that thing that yes. hasn't happened yet. Yes. So I don't feel as bad. Although we could have done it from the very start. He deserves a spotlight we, every week. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> hashtag thanks, team. Yeah. Let's move into our raising topic. All right, uh, topic. Discuss. Oh, discuss topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the topic? Oh yeah, right. Top what are favorite. your favorite handheld games? A cute little tie into uh, a little promotion of CC Portable too. Yeah. Um, do you like handheld games? Because we have a game of the month now that's portable. We do every month. Donkey Kong every month. Yeah. You know what else we have every month? Beat my score. Beat my score. What is it this month? Uh, speed run of the first level of Perfect Dark on Agent Difficulty. I didn't know that. When did, when did, when did we know this? Ryan sent us the video. The video was in the podcast. We never talked about this. Two weeks ago. But we didn't say here where here comes the video with Ryan. Did you just put it in and not say anything? Maybe. Damn it! <laughs> you gotta stop saying, did you just put it in and not say anything? <laughs> All right. All right. So, so, we're speedrunning the first level? First level, speedrun, perfect dark, send a picture. On Asian? On Asian, yeah. Oh, man, I'm doing it. Who, who's winning? I don't know. Probably no one, because nobody knows, because you didn't tell me. I actually think I'm in first. What? <laughs> nobody knows then. Everybody knows. So, how do you do it? You just take, take a picture, picture afterwards. of your, it just shows your time? Yep. Okay. So, I'm going to beat that later. Okay. And I'll be in first. So let's... What's your favorite handout games? Do so. With all my free time, I should do that. Draft Nobby with all your free time. All right. Okay, do you want me to go in order of my favorite? Sure. Or least favorite first? I shouldn't say least favorite. <laughs> you, yeah. I have a top five here. Oh, wow. I didn't even Which that. I okay. pulled from my uh, top 100 list, which I love having now, by the way. Yeah, you can do all these things. Yes. I really wish I had kept mine. You should have. Uh, Metroid 2 on the Game Boy. Ah. One of my favorite gaming memories, handheld-wise. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna start communicating only in the sounds from Breath of the Wild. That's the bowling guy. Uh huh. <laughs> That's horrible. Wow. I remember that about as much as I remember the soundtrack. <laughs> oh, you should have listened to the podcast that I just cut together because that soundtrack was money. Yeah, I do need to realistic. So sad. Too bad it's not like in the game. Metroid Two. <laughs> yeah, Metroid Two definitely. Uh, how about you? I don't have a top five. I'll just. Give five in no particular order. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to open up with Fire Emblem Awakening. Oh, yeah. I really wanted to like that game. This is a game that got me into a franchise, and it is easily one of my favorite games on the 3DS. I'm super impressed that you like it that much. In fact, I see another one over there. That is uh, Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. Are you just going to keep saying Fire Emblem games for this list? 
No. <laughs> Couple bravely defaults in there. <laughs> All okay, right. Way to steal my thunder. All right. Um, I'll do zero mission and fusion as one. Oh. Um, they're both awesome. Yeah. Game Boy Advance. I just realized everything on here is Nintendo. Weird. Is yours too? Nope. Oh. Let's do what everyone is not Nintendo next. Uh, Miramasa. <laughs> That's a Wii game, dude. Miramasa Rebirth on the PlayStation Vita. Yeah, it's, uh, it's better because it has a separate jump button. Yeah, okay. instead of up. I can't argue that. <laughs> uh, and it's also VanillaWare, who are a fantastic developer. And I'm only missing one game. What is it? Uh, technically, it's not VanillaWare. It's Princess Crown on the Sega Saturn. Oh yeah, right. Talked about it last week. Didn't they remake that on 3DS? No, you're thinking Code Princess. I am. Whew. Oh. You almost blew up. <laughs> <laughs> My God. I got a little worried. What do you got next? I was like, is he pooping? <laughs> um, I have Mario Land 3, which is technically the first Wario. I mean, Wario. What, what do people say? Who cares? Wario. What do you say? What, what, Wario. What is it saying here? <laughs> My heart. <laughs> it's Wario. It's the first Wario game. Uh, it's awesome. You get different hats. You get different abilities with them. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Used to go to your ball games and play it on my Game Boy. Oh, cool. Yeah, mom and dad would watch you and I would play Game Boy with uh, Greg Howard, I believe his name was. Yeah, Chris's little brother. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Mario Land 3. Cool. Uh, yeah. My next one at this point would have been Metroid Fusion um, yeah, or Zero Mission. Actually, I think Zero Mission I like better. Me too. Me too. Um, so because I can't do that, I'm going to say Bravely Default. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the list to begin with? Uh, well, yeah, it's not that great a game. It's. Just from what you told me. Uh, Bravely Default is a gorgeous game with fantastic combat. As far as RPGs go, it provides the best way to grind. But is there a good story? Yeah. I don't feel like I can get into chibi characters at all. They're not, the story's not, hey, look at these chibi characters. The story's a tale about a, a, a man yeah, yeah. whose brother gets killed. Ouch. And he has to avenge him. And at the end... Does he? Yeah. Don't spoil it! <laughs> Why did you ask? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. I've always had a trouble with getting into chibi characters. You should really play Bravely Default. I wept. I would like to weep. I love weeping you should, in games. You it's my favorite thing to do. Why do these keep falling on my... Oh, right, because I have tiny ear holes. Well, so do I, but, you know, work on Adapt this. and overcome. <laughs> yeah, Max. Jerk. All right. Um, yeah, I love crying in games. And I just don't know if I can get that from a chibi. But we'll see. Um, <clears throat> number two. You want to guess what my number two is? No. It's probably on your list. Link Between Worlds. Son of a bitch. Number two. I'll give you a chance to guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's my number two. Uh, probably the second best Zelda handheld game. So that means there's one more. Oh, I know your number one is. <laughs> of course. That's clearly a spirit track. So oh, clearly. Uh, Link Between Worlds would have also made my list. Honorable mention to Xenoblade Chronicles 3D and... These are not handheld games. What? That is I a Wii game. Game. So I can't say all the Dragon Quest games? No, you cannot say the Dragon Quest games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nine. You can say nine. Uh, that wouldn't make it. <laughs> um, well, I'm not prepared. Well, you know, I'm going to go with Star Fox 64. Uh, <laughs> uh, Castlevania. All right. Um, you really like that that much? Mirror of Fate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, fair not, enough. Not even the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are better ones. <laughs> Mirror, <laughs> Castlevania Mirror of uh, Fate. Uh, it was a side-scrolling Metroid, uh, sorry, side-scrolling Castlevania uh, with a fun art style, and I actually had a lot of fun from playing it, and I was able to beat it without a guide or a walkthrough, so I felt like a champ. Whoa! I didn't know you beat it. Yeah. Congrats, sir. Congrats. Um, yeah, so... So I can't put Final Fantasy IV on the PSP on my list? You cannot! <laughs> that is not a four. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, I mean, I guess you could, technically. I don't know why you... I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so what's my number one? Link's Awakening. Yeah, buddy! That's my favorite. That's number 30 on my top 100 list. Yeah. And the first portable game to come up. Huh. Yeah, number 30, Link's Awakening. Uh, Link Between Worlds would be on here for me. That's probably mine. Um, you should get your list out. I don't know where I got rid of it. I Like, I punched mine right into the top 100 list. Sure, you didn't have it like a base list? Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I have it always with me. And then I have down at the bottom new games, like Breath of the Wild, that has to get in there at some point. So then... Yeah. I just, uh, I went through the 100 list before it was finalized. I looked at all the games that made the cut that I didn't want to Oh, here we go. I made my top 100 list of all the games that were just on the cusp. <laughs> what about Fantasy Star 4? Is that the one? You got? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have another one. Um, a lot of mine are 
like ports of, of console games. That's okay. Chrono but Trigger. I like handheld gaming. Chrono Trigger is the best handheld game. The Dragon yeah. Quest games on uh, on uh, you get uh, Dragon Warrior one, two, and three on Game Boy Color. You got yeah, yeah. Um, these are all good. Dragon Quest on DS. You got Chrono Trigger. Special shout out to Black Sigil, a 16-bit style Sun. RPG on the DS that is surprisingly rare now. Is Black it? Sigil. Jeez, do I still have one? Did I sell that? Can I see it. Second, okay. second from the end there. I think it's like 80 Good. bucks now. It's ridiculously expensive. Um, Anybody interested in buying it? Yeah. <laughs> you sure it's 80 bucks for Black Sigil? It was for a while, I'm assuming it still is. No way. Look at us! It's not even any good. It is amazing! It's just like Earthbound. Anyway, <laughs> do you like 16-bit RPGs? Do you like playing on the go? Get Black Sigil! Do you like, yes. no idea what to do and no indication of which direction to go? Well, if you're a normie, you might want to avoid it, I uh, guess. Oh... Um, well, why don't you play through it laughing because you have so much time? I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what handheld though. games do you like? There's so many that we could list here. Um, there's a ton we're missing. Yeah, like we didn't even talk about Tetris or anything. Like I don't really care. We about didn't touch the PSP, Patapon, Crisis Core. Yeah, but we're talking about good, like top games. Princess Cake. We're talking about top games. Fat Princess. That's the one. Top games. Are you really chucking sand at the PSP? Chucking sand? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Chucking shade. Check a shade, shade, shade and sand. I have sand no shade. idea what you're saying. These are all words that don't make sense to me. That's our topic. What do you like? What uh, games are you interested in? Yes. What do we have for time? Handheld games. We are at 40 minutes. Wow. We wanted it to be quick. We this are. is the first time it's ever actually been that way. That's what she said. Uh, wait. Mm-hmm. When it, uh, Colleen took me to work today to sign a piece of paper because... I was trying to get an email account set up, and the guys were supposed to do it, so they lost the paperwork. Okay. Um, so I said, just wait here. I'll be back out in two minutes. And I went inside to sign the paperwork, and one of our friends was waiting in the car with her. And I was in there much longer than two minutes. Yeah. And he said, it's been longer than two minutes. And she responded with, this guy's like one of my subordinates. Yes. And she responded to him with, that's weird. Normally, nothing takes longer than two minutes, ah. even when he promises it will. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. That is good stuff. She's a jerk. I cannot find answers. A cheap black sigil. Really? All right, let's do answers. Are we gonna all really selling stuff right now? No, I'm looking at black sigil. Oh, uh, no, I'm gonna leave that in. That's that's good. That's good radio. That is not good. All right, you don't want to leave that in? We'll take it out. You can leave it in. We'll I don't care what you do. You, Hard to say. It's all up to you. Hard to say. All right, so CC answers. If you have questions for us every week, you can ask on Twitter with the hashtag CC answers, and we will answer your question. Uh, unless it's absolutely ridiculous and offensive, in which case uh, we will answer it with a block. Yes. Has uh, that happened? Yes. So. Oh, it has not. <laughs> uh, Donnie asks. Donnie? Oh, no, the, sorry. The Donovan Viper? First up, uh, Matt Bandy asks, are there any games mm-hmm. you two are looking forward to slash wanting to play for CC Portable? I guess um, you could say any on the list that we just named. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, good question. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to playing Donkey Kong, not going to lie. Um, I'm hoping Lock and Chase gets picked. Yeah? I feel like that would be a fun portable... Uh... I like... Uh, I'd like to try a rhythm game that I haven't played before. Ooh, me too. Rhythm Heaven. Yeah, that was called. Pat Upon or Final Fantasy. Yeah, Final Fantasy. Second time Pat Upon has been mentioned. Stop bringing Pat Upon up. Pat up. It's not happening. Anyway, these are the only two I can find right now. And they're wrecked. Cool. Uh, thanks for the question, Matt. What about you? You are arguably the biggest fan of this new Game of the Month show. He is spearheading it. Um, I bet you Mark would like it a lot, too, because where he's only playing 3DS and Nintendo stuff. He should probably check that out. Mark? Which Mark? Gisby. Mark Gisby! Yeah. Big shout-outs! <laughs> yeah. Mark Gisby playing a 3DS! He, uh, oh, uh, Mark. I love that he only has a 3DS and that's all he plays games on. Yeah. And I love that he's so enthusiastic about it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I wish I only had one. I'm actually getting there now. I still have all my consoles. Yeah. Uh, next up, Don Even Viper asks. Donnie! If you were to appear on the Crystal Maze, what five other members of the club would make up your team and why? Gonna need a little more involved. Yeah, I asked him <laughs> what this was, and he responded, and it's a UK game show with Riff Raff in it and later presenters. And then he gave me a link, and I never watched the link. Uh, I think it's kind of like Survivor, but you, but you do like competitions. Uh, okay. I don't know, man. I'm going to take uh, Diego because he's... Uh, Smart. Cunning. <laughs> Ooh, he's very cunning. I'm going to take... You uh, only need to use a portion of his cunning. Eric because he's a, has a good attention to detail. I'm going to take Job for his strength. Ooh, good one. I'm going to take uh, Bill for his ability to... Silver tongue. He's got that silver tongue. Yeah, I was going to say deceive with the silver tongue. Deceive. 
What are we at? Four. And uh, I'm going to take uh, Duke so I can have someone to hang out with while these guys solve all the puzzles. <laughs> yeah, good question. Did you take Eric? Yeah, I took Eric. Oh, okay, I was going to say, you got to take Eric. Duke would be able to like, if something... Oh, Jared and Yoshi. Have to... No, I don't want them. But they could build something. Yeah, but they would end up making like machines that take over the maze. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> then no, you win. See, Duke will fix it if it's broken. Uh, Yoshi true. and Jared will make it take over the world. I don't want that. I don't think they would do that. <laughs> I, I do. They are, I'm pretty sure that they're building Skynet. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know what? I should probably take Liam. He seems to be the only one who knows what's going actually, on. Actually, you know, that's a good call. He actually knows how the show is playing. Yeah, he's the, the biggest asset here. All right. I'm going to draw myself and just believe him in a box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the choices are endless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I might actually watch a YouTube video when I leave here. I want to know what it is. Go back and feel like an idiot for that answer. It's probably like posing nude and painting each other. So, well, then I'm going to stick with my answer. I yeah. St I still take those same people. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Q-Dog asks... Speaking of posing news, oh, I was going to say that. Asks, That's so funny. Do you like a savory breakfast? Example: eggs and meat, maybe mm. potatoes, or a sweet breakfast: pancakes and sweet rolls, etc. Tough question. I, my preferred breakfast is uh, like fruits. What? Uh, seriously, go to we, who are you? Go to Cora's, get like uh, get out of here. It's savory. I like <laughs> uh, savory is what I have the most often. Okay, uh, well, that's the best. What we have. On the weekends, is savory. Mm. Uh, if I go out for breakfast, it's a uh, McDonald's like sausage fruits. and egg muffin because that's that's oh, the best I like breakfast. To eat sandwich. bananas. I I don't like feeling dried out and dehydrated. Why and fruit? Just drink water. But I find the fruit sort of rejuvenating. I've never seen you eat fruit for breakfast. Every time I've ever gone to Coors for breakfast, I get fruit <laughs> on top of waffles. No, <laughs> they have a fruit plate. Yeah. I, all right. If, if I could keep fruit here in the fridge and eat it, I would, but it's a lot of work. And I'm you know what? Just... I do eat a lot of fruit now. I eat two apples and a banana every day, See, no matter what. You just gave me shit for fruit. I apologize. I'm a big fruit guy, yeah, too. It feels so, so freeing to be able to curse this episode since you dropped that so early on. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> uh, but no, savory is the correct answer. Unless you can. I get French toast with bacon on it, so that's kind of sweet. Sweet and savory. Yeah, I guess that's the best answer, then. <laughs> I, I'm P2, and I want it all. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Mrs. Q-Dog? What is your breakfast <laughs> preference? Yeah, what's everybody's favorite? Nope, um, McDonald's just, this is makes a really good breakfast. Next up, Pam asks, great question, and I'm going to shock you with my answer. Pam says, if you could only play one game for the rest of your life, what would it be? This also inadvertently became our question to the club for the week. Did? Yeah, a lot of people started answering her question. So oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So that's why you didn't do one. Okay, gotcha. Right. I got you. Uh, you said you're going to shock me? Yeah. It's not RPGs? No, it's not. What is it? Metroidvania. What? RPGs take a long time. That's why you pick them for the, for the rest of your life. I would pick, Whatever you're going to say is wrong. Um, I'm, I pick <laughs> Metroidvanias. Okay, why? They're fun. Yes. I can beat them. I enjoy them. And I still feel like I'm, I'm experiencing a game. Some RPGs I don't. Oh, my God. God, you're playing this for the rest of your life. So you're never going to play another Zelda game or another Mario game. Oh, I'm talking about you. Your answer. Well, what's your answer? Platformers. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the games I'm looking forward to most are good platformers. So you're never going to play another Oh, Zelda. trust me. This is if I absolutely... Zelda, gonna... first of all, is not an RPG. It's not a platformer either. I know. I just want to make sure... You're that never going to play... I just want to make sure that you know that neither of us have chosen Zelda. You're never going to play another Metroid game. I don't need to play. Yes, I will. No. It's a platformer. No, it's a Metroidvania. That is a ridiculous. That is not true. It's its own genre. If you jump in on platforms, it's a platform. You jump in Zelda on platforms. Yeah. Mm. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. You don't jump on platforms in Ocarina of Time? You don't jump on platforms in Breath of the Wild? There's a jump button in Breath of the Wild, but you don't jump on platforms. You don't jump onto platforms? Hmm. Let me think. No. I don't that think That is do. not the definition of what makes it a platformer. A platformer is when you jump from platform to platform. It's in the name. <laughs> that is a platformer. So Metroidvania, I guess, is platformers too. So why don't you say platformers? Because I don't want to. I want to say Metroidvania. <laughs> that is not a genre, first of all. <laughs> it's a genre. It's a subgenre of platformers. Well, I just want to play a subgenre. I'm so limited, I don't even need a whole genre. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> what are you going to play? What are you going to play the rest of your life? There's like four Metroidvania games that you like. <laughs> what are you going to play? Maybe there's more. I can play Tesla Grad. I can play Shovel Knight. Well, oh, what's that Hollow Knight? That's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah. I can play Salt and Sanctuary. Hey, if you guys have played Hollow Knight... Um, I can play Always Awakening. Let me know what you think of it. 
I could play Order of Ecclesia. Yeah, okay. All right. Are those all I, Metroidvania? Seriously? I could play Flinthook. <laughs> I don't like Flinthook. I could play Wonder Boy and the Dragon. Uh, the Wonder Boy and the Monster Trap. <sighs> Dragon Trap. All right. Monster Trap. Monster uh, Trap. Pam, Dragon. what W? What do you think Pam would pick? Uh, I think Pam would Wait, probably did she pick Poor, poor Big Fools for some. No. Okay. I want to say she'd pick RPGs, but I think she might pick shoot 'em ups. What's a shoot 'em up? Oh, a shmup. Okay, that's what I thought you meant, but I don't think. Pam would definitely pick RPGs. Maybe. Yeah, man. Pam likes short games. Her Twitter handles are wowing. <laughs> she likes short games. She doesn't consider WoW an RPG. It's an MMORPG. But she doesn't consider it an RPG. But it is an RPG. All right. But so, I, I, although, unless you count MMORPGs as their own, like I said, this is its own genre. Yeah. So technically, it isn't an RPG. She would. I don't think she would pick RPGs. She likes short, linear games. Oh man, that's a good question. What makes an RPG? If you level up, it's an RPG, right? Pam actually did a whole video on this. Do you just not watch anybody in the club? I don't. I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. I want to. She has a whole video dedicated to what makes an RPG an RPG. Oh my gosh, go listen. Go watch Pam's video <laughs> and tell me what it says, please. <laughs> Um, so to answer, so, so other people answer this question. She's picking an RPG. I don't think she is. All right, Pam, let us know. We need to come up with a bet on this. Oh my goodness! What do you want to bet? What if we're both wrong? <laughs> it just cancels out. What would she pick? I wonder. So if if one, of, it's not Schmop, man. It's got to be RPG. Yeah, I'm going RPG. So if it's not RPG, yes, you have to yes do something ridiculous. What? Uh, Why is that the new procedure? Uh, this is good. This is good podcasting. <laughs> I should start thinking of yours quick. I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, well, we'll think of something. This is a terrible bet. Well, we should have we should have preloaded bets. Yeah, dude, we gotta go. We gotta let's go. Sorry, it's supposed to be a quick one. What time is it? Uh, well, we were doing good. Um, so, <laughs> so, other people answer this question. Uh, Caleb uh, from Future Caleb asked. Puzzle, er, uh, actually, I think it's called Burning Books. Uh, asked, oh boy, I'm puzzle, about, to get, about to get into it with Caleb here. Puzzle platformers. That's a platformer, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's a puzzle platformer? Uh, I don't know. Is maybe. that like Lost Vikings? Maybe, yeah. Caleb, let me know. Trying, yeah. yeah, trying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's for platformers. Um, will, Ian. Will platformers cover all that? Because I'm going with platformers then. You can't, all right. Yeah. It's platformers, they're all platformers. Yeah. You get all the subgenres. Yeah, thank you're, you. You're P one. You want it all. Yeah, I do. Any game that is jumping is a platform. I get it, dude. Maybe I want RPGs. You can jump in Skyrim. I get that. Are Dark Souls RPGs? Yeah. <sighs> you're never gonna play them again, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, man, platforms all the way. It's gotta be, gotta be platforms. I can play platformers forever. Ian from I'm like Metroid over and over again. Ian, we don't never read these answers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ian from Little Games answered shooters. Pew pew. I'm a spaceship. Yes. Brass of the Gamers. You said that? Yep. Nice. Brass of the Gamers said action platformers, probably. I guess you get to play so those two. that's like a platform, right? <laughs> uh, Daria plays. Said she should answer RPG, but then she'd have to give up horror and adventure games. Tough call. She's not sure. So what she just doesn't pick. pick. She doesn't pick. That's a good call. It's probably the best answer. The best way, or the only way to win, is not to play. Yeah, that's right. Is that how it goes? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it's just some answers from the community. What would be the only genre you would play if you were limited to one? Also, what uh, should the bet be if one of us is wrong? <laughs> yeah. Let yeah. us know. What should the bet be? You should have to do something that you don't want to do. Uh, what's that? I don't know. Keep up with content? Because yeah. <laughs> I, I have no time? Yeah. You should have to make a video. You should have to do <laughs> an update video with Avery. No! No, oh, no, 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 no. You should milk that baby. That's those baby views. She's pretty cute. Baby clicks. All right, uh, next up, Mark Gisby. Yes, Mark! Woo! What's your most embarrassing save loss ever? He sneezed and lost 75 hours of Xenoblade. I oh. hurt just hearing it. It's uh, such a good game. I beat Near Automata. I got ending A, and then I went to start to do ending B, and I hit new game, save over the ending, instead of continue, save over oh. the file. And erase the file and had to play through it again to get ending A again. That is embarrassing. Yeah. That hurts my heart. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, it was pointed out to me that had I taken the time to play the first Near, I would have known how that functioned. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had any troubles. Or if I had just read the end screen of Automata where it says, choose to continue and save over this file. Oh. Uh, so that's my, my biggest one I heard. But I have regained my ending. I am now on ending. I'm working through to ending B at this point. I'm impressed that you're sticking with it. Yeah. Um, it's just really good. I really like the intricacies between 2B and 9S and how she. Stop talking. Oh. They can't love, they're not. <laughs> All right, um, I bought Lufia, I rebought Lufia too. Actually, it was probably shortly after talking to Dean. Mad shout out to Dean again. Um, and that's a great game you're never gonna get to play against, it's not a platformer. 
Oh, I already sold it anyway. It's good. Oh. My heart. I have it. You can rub mine on your skin. Thank you. <laughs> Answer the question. Uh, yeah, my cat jumped up. Uh, it was my little SNES mini. Knocked it. I turned it back on. Save gone. Did you get rid of the cat? And, you know, cat's still around. I would have. But, uh, you know. Um, it is what it is. It's sad when it happens. Left gave a really good story about this on Bonus Barrel. Yeah. So if you're looking for more answers, uh, Mark, check out Bonus Barrel. Next, from Jared of Retro Revolutions. Can you go ice fishing where you live? And then he explains what ice fishing is. <laughs> he does? Yes, you can. You cut a hole in the ground, drop a line in. You, you can. can. In the winter. In the middle of winter, yeah. But not, like, right now. Yeah. I, I wear shorts. I think it is winter for him now. Though. Oh, maybe. But, yeah. It's summer for us. Spring bros. Yeah, in the dead of winter, you can do this in almost anywhere around here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Steven Eider. We don't do it because it sucks because you get cold and it's not fun. <laughs> Steven asks... Would you rather sacrifice, would P1 rather sacrifice himself and be a Navy hero, or let some Navy folks die if it meant he'd be safe for sure? Good God, um, Steven! So I asked for some clarification on this question. What's the clarification? Uh, he was like, if it's a situation where, like, you know, the ship is going down and you have to what is close a door or close a hatch and seal it off to save yourself or possibly leave it open to let your friends out who are down in the hatch. What is this? Um, uh, and in the this... time it took me to read his tweet, I had closed the hatch. Is this. <laughs> Is this hunt for a red octopus? What's the one where the, where the radiation is leaking? Is that you five seven one? one. Uh, Stephen, I pick me in every situation. Every time I pick me. Well, he very specifically says the Navy folk. So yeah, I pick me. I I, there, maybe uh, Jay. I can think of two guys <laughs> that I would consider holding the door open for just for a bit. And if it was, it would be. Are you at the door to get out? Because I still pick me. <laughs> <laughs> Answer the question, Stephen. <laughs> what if it was Dean? I'm letting Dean in. I bet me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Why does this keep... Next up, from... Dude, you need bigger ear things. From Sundary J. What? Sundary J's on our show? No, no. Why do you guys swear so much? <laughs> I've turned to Bonus Barrel for my wholesome, family-friendly oh, entertainment instead. Bar. I'm just so happy we get to say Sundary uh, J. Well, Mr. J, um, Mr. Sundary J, we wouldn't swear so much. We try our best not to, but unfortunately, this scum fuck sitting next to me. Wow, you actually said it. Dropped out bullshit four minutes into the episode. Dropped a hard SF. So uh, it gets to it gets me to the point that I could just throw him around willy nilly, and Patrick Swayze doesn't show up at all this week. Patrick Swayze. Wow. Um, those crew at Bonus Barrel, they are a good crew, and I'm glad you get your wholesome fun there. Yeah. Sundary J is good friends Rob. with Rob. Sundary. Somehow, Rob. I don't know. I didn't know Rob actually had friends. I thought he made him up. Turns out he's a real guy. He's a fantastic person. He's a very nice person. All right, Doesn't like swearing. <laughs> next up. <laughs> Thanks for listening, Sundary J. Game Time with Kyle asks, Woo! If he doesn't like swearing, there's no way he listens to Bonus Barrel. <laughs> I know, that's the joke. <laughs> um, Kyle asks, uh, What unlikely gaming crossover would you like to see happen? What's his? Uh, his is... Metroid and Contra. Metroid and Contra. Good choices, by the way. Yeah. Kind of similar. Yeah. Um, his question led to us finding another podcast. Mine's Metroid and Dead Space. Dude, that's pretty sick. That's awesome. Like a dark horror Metroid? Yeah. That's cool. Or a good Dead Space. <laughs> Dead Space is good. Yeah. The first one. I think it's like a yeah, dark, like a dark horror-ish style Metroid. Survival horror Metroid. Yeah, dude. You so thought about Metroid this. and Dead Space. I like it. How about Dark Souls meets Zelda? Ooh. Mm. Isn't that just called Darksiders? Oh, hey, God. D- dark Souls meets Zelda. That's Breath of the Wild. No, it isn't. Darker. I want a darker Ooh. Zelda. Real gritty. Okay. Dark. Oh, spoilers. You have to edit that. Wow. You have to edit that. Wow. <laughs> well, you better check the timestamp right oh now. Oh, my goodness. That needs to be edited. Unbelievable. <laughs> you're cursing. You're giving out spoilers. <laughs> Maybe I didn't even I don't even know who you are. You better edit that. Now I'm going to be like, what are these spoilers? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Dark right. Souls meets Zelda all the way. So this is the final question from Bill. P1, what clubbers would work? Which positions on the CC battleship? Uh, Dean would be the captain. The XO would be P2. What's an XO? Uh, he's the second in command. He's He takes command when the captain isn't there. Why isn't that you? Because uh, he's also supposed to be the guy that takes care of the crew. Oh, okay. He's like, like, <laughs> like now mo- I've been lucky most of my captains have been decent guys who take care of the crew. Yeah. But the XO is like the, he's your, you know, he's your buddy type guy. Oh, okay. Uh, Bill would be the... He's the guy shoving in, shoveling in the coal. No, I think Bill would. Be, the Titanic. Bill would be the logistics officer. 
He's in charge of procuring all the things we need. Uh, he oh, logistics the officer. I can see him doing that. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi and Jared would be the chief engineer and the engineering officer. Yeah, okay. I'm going to just continue to do my job. Um, <laughs> 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 just let me uh, uh, Joe, Joe and Musty would be uh, enhanced boarding party. They'd be the guys that board through the ships. Yeah. Uh, I think they'd be dangerous. I thought Joe would be a master seaman. Uh, Eric would be the uh, combat systems engineering officer. Uh, he would be so my boss. Okay. Um, and everybody else would be an operator. And you got a lot of jobs in this shit. Dude, there's a ton I even forgot. Holy crap. I didn't even mention. Uh, Rambox would be the SWIC, the surface warfare coordinator. He would be the one who is responsible for choosing what to attack and when. Because I think being, you know, in Japan, he probably Dude, has the best experience. Dude, I didn't know all this. There's a ton more. There's a ton. <laughs> Wow, it's like a whole uh, another world there. And we need a cook. Who's going to be the chief cook? It's, it's going to be somebody who can raise morale and keep uh, people happy. J-Rock, the game runner. Good choice. And Julian can be his, his sous chef. Sure. Julian Vega and J-Rock in the yeah. kitchen? Oh, man. I want to work Diego in Diego would be the Jago. I don't know who that is. Jag officer. Uh, oh, okay. Judge advocate general officer. Gotcha. Um, oh, I missed that show, Jag. Yeah. So anyway, that's who I think there would be. Oh, one more is the coxswain, and he's like the hard ass. He's the guy who does the punishing. When people screw up. There's a Punisher on the yeah. ship? And that oh. would probably be... Uh, did you already say Eric? Because I think he could do it. Curtis. <laughs> Curtis? Yeah. He can't punish people. Now, sometimes you can have a good cox and treat you good. Actually, maybe he would enjoy that. Actually, you know what? I think that might be Curtis. <laughs> Alright, so... No, Vintage! Vintage would do that. Oh, you're right. Vintage is the cox. Yeah, Curtis could be like a psychic. Fun fact, Vintage <laughs> actually sat in the captain chair of a Canadian patrol frigate. Wow. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, we took a picture. It explains nice. our military uh, strength. Final question from Bill P2. Which clubbers would work which jobs in the hospital? Oh, man. I have the same question. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the hospital. Fun fact. My friend at work, Jay, could be in both questions because he was a combat medic before. Whoa. He was a weapons engineering technician. Wow. I don't know if many people know about the weird jobs at the hospital. Let's start with uh, who would be the head surgeon? The head surgeon. Do you think there's a head surgeon? Is there not? No. Who works on your head then when you're when you, have you mean a brain surgeon? <laughs> Dude, this is a tough question. I don't know how to answer this. I'm not good at questions. Pick a surgeon. Uh, who would I want operating on me? Yeah. Um, uh, probably Eric. All right. Yeah, or Seiji. Seiji. Yeah, I would take either of them. Okay. Who's the anesthesiologist? Who put you to sleep? Oh my, that's tough. <laughs> See, it's not about uh, anesthesiologists. It's about it's not about going to sleep. It's about how they wake you up. Um, you want somebody very calm and gentle to bring you back. Because some people are like tapping on your head. And, like, so hey, you won't rob. Shaking them. You're probably, yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, maybe not rob. Rob. Uh, Trav? No, I want Trav? somebody very calm. Oh, Trav. That's a good one. I would love to wake up to Trav. Yeah. Any day. Just, all right. Um, Any day. Who would be uh, Morg? Morg? Yeah, is there a Morg guy? Morg job. You get some hunchback. <laughs> some hunchback. What do you think is happening? I don't know, man. Watch Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Who's the dreamy? <laughs> Morg guy. I don't know who Morg guy is. I don't know. J-Rock. J-Rock could do Morg guy. Uh, well, I think, I think J-Rock could do it. Um, yeah. That's it? That's all. That's it. Who's the head nurse? Head nurse? Yeah. These are positions. Oh my god. <laughs> you telling me our, our medical system doesn't have a head surgeon? Um, Not like a head surgeon. Like the head surgeon. I know what you're saying. Surgeon. No. Orthopedics has a guy that sort of runs orthopedics. But there's no head surgeon. There's different divisions in every... We have. Who decides what experimental surgery is to do? Oh my god, that does not happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have an orthopedic section, a general surgery section, a pla get general uh, plastics and, and vascular section. Like, there's no head of all these, because nobody can run all these things, because nobody knows all this. Who would be the person that carries the body parts to the morgue? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks and for listening, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show this week. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, please head over to www.cartridgeclub.org where you can check out other great podcasts, videos, and blogs from our community. Yeah. If you are already a member of the Cartridge Club, you can head to www.patreon.com slash cartridge club where you can donate as much or as little as you like, and every cent donated goes to improving the club. I am player one. I'm player two. CC Unite.